Hey, what's going on everybody? Uh, so the other day I did a Q&A about the new album on my Instagram and I figured today I would just do like a video version of it for YouTube and just answer some of the questions that have been brought up and uh, try to explain it as best as I can. My real question, what do you do when you aren't motivated to play or is there ever a time? Yeah, honestly, that's a very common thing. Like most musicians that I know go through the same thing. Uh, the thing I, I recommend is just knowing that your future self is going to thank you later. Every time. Like if you practice, you're never going to think back like, oh, I'm glad I didn't practice. And when I started using that mindset, I was able to be a lot more productive. I was able to get a lot more songs done, videos done, you know, whatever you do. If you like to draw, if you like to play music, whatever it is, just know that your future self will thank you later. Can you slide too much? No, you cannot. Can we get the 18 minute version of Omega, please? Okay, yeah, so Omega is actually the last three songs on the album. Uh, it was written as one song, and I split it up into three tracks during the mastering phase for streaming purposes, so that way 18 minutes isn't one track. I feel like it would probably do better in three separate tracks, and it has three different feels anyway, so it's kind of fun to be able to like split it up. So Red Velvet, Ocean Grip, into Mobius. Um, and on the YouTube, you can see it says Omega 1, Omega 2, Omega 3, and it's this big 18 minute song that I uh, like basically killed myself for writing, but I was so proud of it with all the guest stars on it. They, they just like killed it on there. So yeah, the 18 minute version's on the YouTube stream. You can see it right there. It flows seamlessly, and uh, I hope you enjoy it. What's your approach for writing melodies? Do you sing them out slash noodle on the guitar? Um, yeah, so... Obviously, there's not one definite way that I do everything, but I do like to sing out my melodies and I'll oftentimes play them on one string. So that way they have a more of a voice aspect to them. I do that on Let Us Dance. You can see I play the whole chorus on like one string um, and it gives it a very vocal sound. Now on the other end, I like to do very rhythmic sounding things. Basically, I'll have like the scale or the key kind of already set up, so the vibe's there, but then I'll just kind of beatbox like a rhythm and then once I have that rhythm, I input those notes into it and it ends up kind of sounding really cool. It's very different from what my hands would dictate usually. My hands have a specific, you know, rhythmic set or like licks almost embedded in them. But my head or my brain wants to have a little bit more of a groovy side to it. So that's kind of like blending the best of both worlds. My left hand has the licks in there. My right, my right hand, <laughs> my head has all of the cool rhythms and all the grooves in there so you put them together and it creates like a really fun riff or melody or whatever you're trying to create and right now i'm going to bring up our sponsor distrokid i'm sure you've heard about them from me uh, i use them to release the album and they've been a really kind company to me um, and they're actually very helpful when it comes to being a musician so i'm going to be talking about the splits today so splits is basically when you do a collab with an artist, you guys can have a revenue share. Usually it's a very sticky situation. Uh, with DistroKid, it's like insanely easy to the point where I'm confused how they made it this easy, but I'll take it. So if you go to your dashboard, you just click on splits. Once you do that, it takes you to this page. You pick your release. So if I go to um, split, let's click on split, right? Uh, and then from here, you can just click add collaborator. So obviously it says Charlie Robbins right here, 100%. So with that, I get 100%, but if I wanna add somebody, you can just put in their email, click enter, and then choose the percentage of revenue share that they get. I will mention you can add or remove collaborators at any time that you'd like. You can go back in time and see any previous splits that you have for there, and the collaborators only see what percentage they get, so you won't be able to see what other collaborators are getting. It's more for privacy purposes. And as always, DistroKid doesn't get any cut of this. You get 100% of the earnings between you and your collaborators, so that's another great thing. Any new videos coming up showcasing the tones you used on this album specifically? Yes, uh, Brandon Hart and I are actually doing a, it's like a little masterclass thing. It's more on his end because he's the one that mixed it, but we're getting together to do a video on one of the songs on the album. He's going to break down pretty much everything that he did on it. I, I've been told it's going to be a lengthy, very informational course, but uh, yeah, he's, he's going crazy with it with the lighting and getting a production crew and all that stuff. It's it's gonna be really cool. And personally, someone who also like studies mixing stuff, I'm gonna like probably watch it and like probably learn from it. So it's gonna be really cool to see what he did. Um, as for the tones, I use Neural DSP 100% for the electric guitar. The main solo on Mobius reminds me a lot of Vitalism. Have you ever heard of them? Yes, I have heard of them. 
And it's interesting that you say that solo sounds like them because that's actually Lucas on there. He has his new project, Odeon, which is, I'm pretty sure that's how you pronounce it, but they're really sick. They just dropped a new song. Um, I think it's called Gasoline and it has like this similar vibe too. So it's very, very cool. And I loved getting all the guest parts back because I was like geeking out on them. How did you come to have your own style? Well, it's tough because it's not like I can say like, oh, you do this. But specifically for this album and kind of like my motto for the past like few years is like picking three things that you like really love and then like blend them together. And once you do that, it generally will kind of have its own sound. So for A Place to Breathe, basically what I wanted to do was get classical and flamenco with metal and then modern instrumental, you know, prog stuff uh, and blend those together to see what would happen. So. Color Tour was basically like the experimentation phase to see how it would sound, how would people react to it, how do I react to it, and I ended up like loving the sound, and then the response was like huge. So it's one of those like few rare times where you get to play something that you genuinely love, and then the people also love it too, rather than you, you know, you do a cover and it blows up and you're like, dang it, now I have to do covers now. You know, I was I was lucky enough to be able to do something that was like kind of like um like a dream project in a way and people responded to it how long did it take to write all these songs so short answer basically like a year uh, but if you go back like five years you're gonna find some of these riffs in my old videos um, and like throughout the year I've you know I have a lot of lessons it takes up you know like 10 hours a day for me so I don't have the time I used to just you know write an album um, and I did want to take my time with it you know make sure it's exactly what I wanted and ultimately that just made it a longer process but you know I, I am glad that I did spread it out amongst that time because I'm so proud of it and uh, all the guest artists elevated it to a, to a level that I wouldn't have been able to do by myself. Biggest influences for the record. So there's gonna be so many because there's always just some that have just like planted seeds into your playing or writing but like right off the bat, uh, Grisha Gorichev, who's a flamenco guitarist that came to my college years ago and basically uh, inspired me to like fall in love with the music. L. Armin, he's on the record. I met him earlier last year, I believe, and uh, he's from my hometown and he's a, an amazing flamenco player and he inspired me for this record. So it, it was perfect that he was able to hop on and then do his thing on Mobius and a uh, beautiful player. Uh, Danny Elfman's always a huge inspiration. You know, he does a lot of Tim Burton films, but he's done a lot more as well too, but that's what people may know him for. And that part in Mobius where it cuts out and it's, it goes to the Danny Elfman part that I, I like to call it. Paco de la Silla, uh, Pepe Romero. You know, like I said, there's too many to count. Um, Between the Bear to Me, if we're going for like a more contemporary like metal band. Uh, Between the Bear to Me, Pliny. I'll, I'll, pretty much all the usual suspects. Trying to get all the things that I love about them and then just like, put it into my own voice. The world needs a Charlie Neural DSP suite, when? Hopefully soon, that would be great. What is the hardest song to play and what is the song you are most proud of? So the hardest song is probably Let Us Dance. I'm sure you know why that ending solo riff is insane. And um, the whole song is pretty much just like, you know, making you run. Uh, the rhythms are pretty, pretty hard, uh, but it's, it's so fun to play. Now the song I'm most proud of is Omega, you know, like it's the full 18 minute track. It's so blown away by all the guest features on there and like, you know, everybody that contributed to it. It's just this huge piece that I love. But if we're going specific within Omega, Red Velvet. I think Red Velvet is, is so cool because the viola solo from Cohen, uh, he just completely just like took over that song, knocked it out of the park. And I remember hearing that for the first time and I was like, Am I hearing this? This is exactly what I wanted. It was perfect. So yeah, Red Velvet, I love that song. Uh, but overall, Omega is the probably the track I'm most proud of. Probably my whole career, I think that's the track I'm most proud of. And that's all the questions for today. If you want to do another one, you know, just let me know. I can try and find the time to like do one of these. Uh, but yeah, I appreciate all the love that I've gotten on the record. Um, go show all the guest artists all the love you can give them. They ultimately were the ones that brought this together and made it what it is. So thank you, and I will see you all soon.